Hey guys, it's Erica and I'm at Lowe's because if you are just getting started with plants in the winter time, there is usually not as big of a selection of different plants as in the spring or the summer. So I'm gonna show you what plants are good to get right now. There's also some plants that I would avoid because they go dormant. And I feel like also if you're just getting started with plants, you kind of want one that's a little bit rewarding to grow. So let's go check them out. So here's the plant selection, which as you can see is very empty. It's a lot more empty than usual. Plants that are usually a staple that usually every Lowe's and Home Depot has are missing. So we're gonna start off with the number one plant I always say beginners should get, which is a pothos. So here we have a golden pothos. Golden pothos grow through almost anything. They don't need much light and they will still keep growing. The leaves just keep on coming. I feel like this is one of the most rewarding plants ever and it's so easy. You can't stress enough how great this plant is. It is super underrated just because it's so common. But this one is 1698. This is kind of a big one. Um, they have some smaller ones here in six inches and these are 1298. See they're really pretty trails. So definitely a pothos. And then a ZZ plant is also a really good one. As you can see, it's tough as nails. It's definitely not as rewarding as a pothos because it doesn't grow as quickly. Like you're not gonna see new leaves constantly. They grow up as these kind of little shoots and they come up individually. So the shoots aren't gonna get any taller once it grows out, that's how tall it's gonna be. So that's why you're not gonna keep seeing little leaves grow. But it is fun to see the little new sprouts pop up. So you can see there's one right there, sorry about my nails, but you can see there's a really little um, baby coming out there and that's how they grow. So these aren't not gonna get any taller. There's just gonna be new little um, sprouts popping up from the rhizomes underneath. So if that's something that you're look, looking forward to, this is a good plant. Oh, there's one growing up right here. And that's also the same for snake plants. They're pretty much the same care. They really don't need much light at all. They really don't need much water at all and they will still do all really well, but you're not gonna see them grow as much, which is kind of sad. A peace lily is also a really good plant to grow because it does not need much light. It definitely does need more watering though. Like you will see a droop when it gets thirsty, um, but it does have these flower spikes that are really cute. If it doesn't get much light, like it probably won't in the winter time, then it's not gonna have flower spikes. So if you really want the flower spikes, then maybe wait till the springtime or summertime where there's more light to promote any flower growth. But other than that, I think it's a really good plant. Definitely a lower light plant, which is pretty much what we want in winter. Lower light, and since the soil probably will dry slower in the winter, you won't have to water it as much, but they do like more water. And again, if the flower thing doesn't bother you, personally, I like it without flowers more than with flowers. So if you like that too, then this is a really good plant. And then here is a plant that you can only buy in towards like the end of fall and in the winter time. And this is a Thanksgiving cactus. Um, there's different kinds of schlum schlumberga cactuses, but this is the most common one that's sold. It's definitely in grocery stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, big box stores during the winter time because they start blooming in the winter. It's called a Christmas, uh, sorry, a Thanksgiving cactus because that is around the time that it blooms. The blooms are so pretty, so if you want flowers, this is the plant that you want. Um, it doesn't really, since it doesn't have like leaves, foliage, it's more kind of flat cactus looking like. If you want a more cactus looking plant, this is really good. So you're not gonna get that like leafy foliage growth that I would be aiming for personally but some people probably would like this more than like a pothos. And the last one that I see here that I would highly recommend are Syngoniums. Syngoniums like to grow and trail. They kind of don't look like trailing plants, but they are. I personally like how they look when they grow upwards instead of start falling down. But here they are. These ones are $16.98 and they're really pretty. Lots of leafy, like a very leafy looking plant. So this is one that I would recommend if you want a more leafy looking plant. And they even have like different colors, like there's pink and white. Yeah, just multiple colors depending on where you are. 
Now we're gonna get into plants that I would not recommend to buy during the winter time. So there's some crotons right here and I would say these are ones that you definitely want to avoid during winter because during the winter when you have your heater on, the air is usually dry if you don't have a humidifier and that's when spider plants love to thrive and crotons are a magnet to spider mites so that's how you can accidentally infect your whole entire house plant collection but if you're like drawn to them go ahead and buy one doesn't really matter what time um but if, if not you're just looking for a plant i would not recommend this one and up here are ivies which are the same situation as crotons and not to mention crotons do like brighter light but Ivy is definitely a spider mite magnet as well. And we got some palms here. Palms do like more light, which during the winter time is not really available. And they also really attract spider mites. So pretty much the ones that I highly don't like, highly recommend to avoid are plants that attract spider mites. Because during the winter time, spider mites can get crazy. And the last plant I would advise to stay away from are calatheas. Um, because of the uh, lack of humidity because of heaters, unless you have a humidifier again, then the ends of the leaves are going to get crispy very easily. You can see this one right here. It's already getting kind of crispy. And they're just more difficult to take care of if you don't have like a very humid environment. So I would just avoid these. Unless you have a humidifier, then it should be better. But if you do not have a humidifier, then it's probably not a good idea. So you can see these guys are crispy and they're in an area that's not humidified. So essentially to boil down the plants that I really recommend, they're the plants that are either blooming during the winter time or they grow in low light areas. Those are the plants that I would suggest you buy now. And the ones that I really think that you should stay away from are the plants that like a lot of bright sunlight and ones that really attract spider mites. They're like spider mite magnets. Once you get spider mites on that plant, it spreads to the other plants that you have, so it's good to veer away from those. This was more one for plants that you could find in person at a big box store that they usually carry, even though the selection isn't really as great. But if you wanna see an online version of this, let me know and I can do that. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.